Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the labor efficiency variance. We continue with our lessons on standard costing. We have looked at the other variances in our other lessons. You'll find the links to those lessons in the description below. So what did we say standard costs are? A standard cost is a predetermined target cost that provides a benchmark against which to measure your actual performance. The difference between actual costs and standard costs is called the variance. The variance could either be favorable or unfavorable. And we have to determine for whatever variance we're calculating if it's favorable or unfavorable. And sometimes and many times we'll have to explain what are the possible reasons as to why they may be favorable or unfavorable. So in this one, we'll be going through some examples on calculating the labor efficiency variance and also analyzing it or explaining what possible reasons it could have been that they are favorable or unfavorable. The labor efficiency variance is calculated by multiplying the difference between the standard time allowed and the actual time worked by the standard rate. So that's very important. And that's where we're going next. What is our formula for the labor efficiency variance? Well, it is standard time allowed minus the actual time worked times the standard rate. That is how we calculate the labor efficiency variance. Very important. It's the standard time allowed. And that could be, and in most times, it's in hours. So we put the standard time allowed in hours or the total hours that would have been allowed for the actual units we produced minus the actual time that you worked to produce the units that you have. And then you multiply that by the standard rate. So how do we get the standard time allowed? Well, like I just mentioned, you get it by taking the standard time per unit or the standard hours per unit, if you are given that, times the actual units that you produced. So you're taking the standard time per unit and you multiply that by the actual units that you produced. And what does the variance mean when it's favorable or unfavorable? Well, you can see here the way the formula is structured is if you punch it into your calculator and you're getting a negative answer, if you do it the exact same way this formula has shown, then you know that the variance is unfavorable. But if you get a positive answer, then you know that it's favorable. So what does it mean? Well, if the actual time worked is less than the standard time allowed, the variance is favorable. And that is where you'd get a positive answer. And why would the variance be favorable? Well, if you look at the formula here, if your actual time worked is less than the standard time allowed, then your variance is favorable because you will have worked for less hours or for less time than you anticipated to work. I hope it's making sense. If your actual time worked is less, it means you will have worked for less amount of time than you planned to work or than you allowed to work, which is a good thing because it means that we saved time. And what would that mean as well? Well, it means that we produced our product more quickly than we expected because perhaps our workers were more efficient or they were motivated to do their work well or we had better quality material that enabled us to do our work quite quickly. So that could be the reason. But another reason it could be favorable is because we may have made an error in allocating time to the jobs. Remember, we may have over allocated. We may have thought we'll use quite a lot of time and we may have made an error with regards to that where we made a mistake in our calculation of our standard time allowed. So those are possible reasons as to why the variance would be favorable. And when is it unfavorable? Well, I'm sure you know by now. If the actual time worked is greater than the standard time allowed, the variance is unfavorable. And why is that? Well, if you worked for more time than you thought you'd work, then obviously that would lead to you working for more hours. And that means that you will have spent more money for working more hours. That is why it would be unfavorable. What are some possible reasons? Well, we know here that you have lost time or you have used more time than you should have used. And possible reasons for that could be that our workers are not well trained for them to perform their work within the time that we allocated, or it could have been that we had substandard materials. Remember, if we have poor quality materials that we are using here, it could incur more time in order for us to ensure that we produce our products well. So we would have spent more time because of substandard materials or because we didn't train our workers well. Or another possible one, just like we mentioned for the favorable variants, it could be unfavorable because we made errors in allocating time to the job or to the production. We could have thought that we'll work less time and we didn't do our calculations well. Those are possible reasons why the labor efficiency variants would either be 
favorable or unfavorable. Now let's go into the examples and show you how we calculate the labor efficiency variance. Here's an example. We are told that the labor details in the production department of Max PLC are the standard labor cost is 2.4 hours at 3 rand per hour, and the actual hours worked and the rate is 450 hours at 2 rand 80 per hour. And the number of units produced is 200. So we produced 200 units during the period. Now, if you have looked at this question, I'm sure you would have seen it if you looked at our other example on the labor rate variance. We use the exact same examples we're going to go through here in this lesson to do the labor efficiency variance. So it would be a good practice for you to calculate both the labor rate variance, which we have done in our lesson, in the link in the description below, as well as the labor efficiency variance using the same examples. Now, what is our formula for calculating the labor efficiency variance? Well, let's bring it up again. It's the standard time allowed minus the actual time worked times the standard rate. So what is our standard time allowed? Well, we are, we are allowed to work 2.4 hours to produce each unit. So we want the total amount of time we expected to produce the units that we have produced. So remember the formula again for that one. It's the standard time per unit. And what is the standard time per unit? Well, it's the 2.4 hours. That is the standard labor cost. As you can see here, it's the 2.4 hours. So we expected to use the 2.4 hours and we multiply that by the actual units that we produced. What is the actual units we produced? Well, you can see here number of units produced is 200. So we'll take 2.4 hours times 200 units and it gives us 480 hours. That means since we produced 200 units, we expected to use 480 hours to produce those units. So we have the standard time allowed, which is the 480 hours, and then we deduct the actual time worked. How long did it actually take us to produce the 200 units? Well, you can see here the actual hours worked is the 450 hours. So we have the actual time worked, which is the 450 hours, and then we multiply it by the standard rate. What is our standard rate per hour? Well, it's 3 rand per hour, as you can see up here. So our standard time allowed is the 480 hours minus the 450 hours, which is the actual time worked, and we multiply that by the standard rate of 3 rand per hour. And it gives us an answer of 90 rand, and it's favorable. And why is it favorable? Well, as you can see here, well, if you punch it into your calculator, you can see we get a positive answer. That is how you know it's favorable, but you should know more than that. You can see that our actual time worked is 450 hours. While we anticipated for the 200 units that we produced, we could have spent or we thought we would have spent 480 hours. So we spent less time than we thought we would. That means we saved money. And you can see that by the fact that we would have paid 3 rand per hour. So we saved 3 rand times the sum of these two here and gave us 90 rand favorable. So it's a favorable variance. Again, if you're asked to explain what possible reasons could it have been why we have a favorable variance, well, like I mentioned before, it means that Perhaps our workers were motivated and they worked more efficiently and they spent their time well in producing the units that we produced or we got better quality materials. If we have better quality materials, then we would have worked more efficiently and produced our units well. Another reason it could have been, we might have made a mistake. Maybe we thought we would have spent 2.4 hours per unit, but that was an error that we had when we were doing our calculations. So those are possible reasons why it would be favorable. I hope it's making sense. I hope you now know how to calculate the labor efficiency variance. Here's our second example. And what I'd like you to do here is to pause the video, attempt the question on your own so that you gauge your understanding of calculating the labor efficiency variance. And after you have attempted it on your own, you can continue with the video and compare your answer to mine to ensure that you understand how to do this one here because following along may not tell you if you fully understand it but attempting it first and then comparing yours to mine may help you gauge your understanding of the topic or where you may be struggling so go ahead and do that and then you'll continue the video okay i hope you have attempted the question let's read it together it says that the standard time allowed to produce one unit of product ego is five direct labor hours at a standard rate of 12 rand per hour it took the company 3330 hours at 14 rand 50 per hour to produce 650 units of product ego calculate the labor efficiency variance well i hope you know the formula by now it should be easy it's the standard time allowed minus the actual time worked multiplied by the standard rate 
So what is our standard time allowed? Well, we're told here that the standard time allowed to produce one unit of product ego is five direct labor hours. So we know that for every unit we produced, we should have taken five direct labor hours. So how do we calculate our standard time allowed? Well, if you remember this one here, it's the standard time per unit, which in this case is five direct labor hours. And we multiply that by the actual units that we produced. We're told here that it took the company 3,330 hours at 1,450 per hour to produce 650 units. So we're going to take the five direct labor hours the standard time per unit and we multiply that by the actual units of 650. So five times 650 will give us an answer of 3,250 hours. So that is the standard time allowed, meaning that is how much time we expected it to take us to produce the 650 units. And what is our actual time worked? Well, that's quite easy. We're given the actual time worked. We're told that it took the company 3,330 hours. So we will take the 3,250 hours minus the actual time worked of 3,330 hours. And then we multiply that answer by the standard rate. What is our standard rate? Well, we're told that the standard rate was 12 rand per hour here. So once we have done that, we should get our answer. And if you punch it into your calculator, you should get a negative answer, meaning that the answer is unfavorable or meaning that the variance is unfavorable. And why would it be unfavorable? Well, it's quite easy. You can see our standard time allowed to produce the 650 units was 3,250. But we used more time than that. We used 3,330 hours to produce the 650 units. And that is why the variance is unfavorable because we used more time. So that's a basic explanation. And that means by using more time, we spend more money because the standard rate per hour is 12 rand. So what are the possible reasons as to why the variance would be unfavorable? Well, it could be that we did not train our workers well for them to produce these units. Maybe they were not well trained or we had substandard materials, meaning that we had poor quality materials that we used. And that's why it took us more time to produce the units that we did. Or you can go back to the error again. It could have been an error in our calculation. Maybe we made a mistake when we calculated the five direct labor hours per unit. Maybe we made a mistake. I hope it's making sense. I hope your answer is the same as mine. And if it's not, I'm sure you're able to see where you may have gone wrong. Let's do one more example on calculating the labor efficiency variance with a variation in the information that we are given. We can see here that we are told that BRD LLC has a standard time of 0 0.6 hours to produce one tray at a standard rate of 5 rand per hour. It took the company 22,000 hours of direct labor at a total cost of 99,000 rand to make 27,500 trays. Calculate the labor efficiency variance. Now again, if you'd like to pause the video here and attempt the question yourself and then continue the video and compare your answer to mine, you can go ahead and do that. I hope you have attempted the question on your own. Now we can continue. We are calculating the labor efficiency variance, and I'm sure you know the formula by now. It's the standard time allowed minus the actual time worked times the standard rate. So what is our standard time allowed? Well, we are told that it has a standard time of 0 0.6 hours to produce one unit, okay, or one tray. So that means we should have taken 0 0.6 hours to produce one tray. So what is our standard time allowed? Well, we will take our standard time per unit, which is the 0 0.6 hours, and we multiply that by the actual units that we produced. How many units did we produce? Well, we made 27,500 trays, as you can see here. So we have the 0 0.6 hours times the 27,500 trays, and it gives us an answer of 16,500 hours. So it should have taken us 16,500 hours to produce the 27,500 trays. So that is our standard time. We have the 16,500 hours. What is our actual time worked? Well, you can see here, it took the company 22,000 hours. So our actual time worked is 22,000 hours. And then we multiply that answer by the standard rate. What is our standard rate here? We are told that it's at the standard rate of 5 rand per hour. So we multiply it by 5 rand per hour. So we're going to take the 16,500 hours minus the actual time worked of 22,000 hours and we multiply that by 5 rand per hour. And it gives us an answer of 27,500 rand. Now don't confuse the units that we have here and the rand amount that we have here. This is the actual rand and it's unfavorable. 
if you punched this into your calculator you would see that your answer is negative that's why you'd know it's unfavorable but we'd also know it's unfavorable because of the fact that our actual time work is more than our standard time allowed meaning we spend way more time than we expected to spend or than we thought we would have spent and that is why we have an unfavorable variance of 27,500 rand which is not a good thing obviously so how do we justify that what could have happened well it could be lack of training of our employees once again or they were more idle they were not motivated to work or we had substandard material once again or we could have made a mistake here you could have said could have made a huge error in calculating how much time we expect to take to produce the units that we are producing in the company i hope it has made sense i hope you now know how to calculate the labor efficiency variance and it's becoming easy for you to do that and how to analyze it as well give possible reasons as to why the variance would be favorable or unfavorable if you've gained value from this lesson if you have learned something please subscribe to our channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help and if you'd require one-on-one -on -one sessions with us we offer that at reasonable rates you'll find our information in the description below if you'd like to get in touch with us Till next time, cheers.